You won't believe how incredible this cauliflower pizza crust tastes. And best of all, it's completely grain-free and very easy to make. I'm Justin from Cooking with Coit. I specialize in clean comfort cooking. And if you love this recipe, make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons. Let's get started. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is make sure that your oven is preheated to 400 degrees. I am just saying that because I always forget to tell you guys, and then in like one minute, I say it, and then I feel like I've ruined your day. So let's do the preheating right now. 400 degrees, there we go, okay. I've already rinsed my cauliflower head, and now I'm going to cut it into florets. Now the florid size is not so important here. I basically just wanted to take the cauliflower head and break it into small pieces. We're gonna dump the whole thing in our food processor next. So don't be too obsessed with what size it needs to be. All right, next thing we're gonna do is pop these cauliflower florets into our food processor. I'm gonna try to get all these little bits up too. I hate to waste. All right, let's pop on the top. And we are going to pulse until we have created essentially what is called cauliflower rice. Just breaking up the cauliflower into pieces that are roughly about the size of a grain of rice. So let's give it a little pulse. And it happens really fast. Okay, that should do it. Let me show you guys what size I'm talking about here. Brayden, we get a shot of that. So check this out. Now we've made essentially cauliflower rice like I said before and this is the size that you're looking for. All right, so now let's take this cauliflower rice and we're gonna dump it into the bowl. Next thing we're gonna do is microwave this cauliflower rice on high for three minutes. And the whole point of that is we wanna cook the cauliflower all the way through. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna stop this microwave from cooking at about halfway through, which is a minute 30, which is just about right now. And what I'm gonna do is give this a little bit of fluff so that we're cooking the cauliflower nice and evenly all over. So just give it a quick little mix and then let's pop it back in and finish off the minute and a half cooking. All right, we just finished cooking the cauliflower in the microwave. It is nicely softened. You're not gonna notice like this massive difference when you take it out from when you put it in, but if you pinch it a little bit, what you're gonna notice is it has softened and it will kind of hold together if you just give it a little bit of a pinch like that. Next thing we're gonna do is take a clean dish rag, clean dish rag, do not use a dirty dish rag, and you can place it over a bowl. I'm gonna use the bowl from the food processor because it's here. Put it over just like that, and then we are, well, okay. So here's the thing, guys. Really, you should let this cool before you do this next step. That's what a smart person would do. Now, I am kind of impatient, so I'm gonna see if I can muscle through this. But for you guys, please set this aside, let it cool before you start handling it, or you might burn your fingers. Again, I'm impatient, so I'm just gonna go for it. So take the cauliflower, put it into this dish rag, just like this. It's okay if it falls all the way into the bowl, that's fine. All right, we're gonna wrap this cauliflower up just like this in this clean dish towel. We're going to give it a little bit of a twist and already I can feel the moisture wanting to come out. We really wanna squeeze as much of the water that's in this cauliflower out as we can. That's really going to help us later when we're baking this cauliflower pizza crust. It's gonna help it firm up more. If you don't do this step, you are gonna have very soggy cauliflower pizza crust and nobody wants that, I promise you. So just give it a little bit of squeeze. It's so hot. It's literally steaming. Guys, can you see this? It is steaming and I am trying to squeeze it out. Okay, I'm gonna take a break. I am just gonna let this sit here for a second and cool down so I don't burn my hands. I'll be right back. All right guys, I am back. I feel like I just became an adult today because I did the responsible thing. I let this cool and now I'm not gonna burn my hands. Okay, so let's squeeze out as much of the liquid as we can and look at all of that liquid coming out. It's crazy how much water is in cauliflower, but it kind of goes to show you that that's why these vegetables are so healthy for you because not only are you getting all the fiber and stuff from the veggies, but you're also getting a lot of water as you're eating them too. So squeeze out all of the water, try to get as much as you can out. And what I do is I just kind of keep giving it a twist so that the fabric around the cauliflower really gives it a very good squeeze. It's still kind of hot, by the way. Didn't let it cool all the way. All right, so what you should be left with is 
this type of texture. So check this out. This is what cauliflower looks like when you squeeze most of the water out. Next thing we're gonna do is grab out a big mixing bowl. We're first gonna start with lightly beating two eggs. We're gonna add the eggs to the bowl first so that we don't have to dirty up another bowl. You're welcome. Nobody wants to clean more dishes than absolutely necessary. I'm completely convinced of that, especially after this COVID experience. I could never do another dish again and be so happy. So let's do a quick little beat on the eggs. You don't have to go crazy here. Next, we're going to take our softened and squeezed out cauliflower and let's dump it into this bowl. Next, we're gonna add our cheeses. We're first gonna start with a quarter of a cup of Parmesan cheese. We're gonna be following that up with a half a cup of mozzarella. Mozzarella happens to be my favorite cheese. I feel like that's a very common thing to say and maybe kind of obvious, but Mozzarella is delicious, right? In the comments below, if you guys would, would you let me know what your favorite cheese is? I would love to hear it. Okay, that's half a cup of mozzarella plus that and plus that. You gotta try it. You can't cook with mozzarella and not try it. Next, we're gonna add our spices. We're first gonna, well, oregano is a, is a herb. No, guys, okay. A couple videos back, I had this whole thing with my camera person at the time, whether oregano was a spice or an herb. It's not really spices, it's herbs. It's thyme I... and oregano. That's not spices. But it's in the spice aisle. Yeah, but they're not spices. Really not that important. It could probably be both. I kind of think it's an herb now. But maybe the dried version is a spice and the fresh version version's an herb? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Half a teaspoon of oregano. You can't make pizza without oregano. All right, we're gonna also add a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And last but not least, we're gonna add our salt and pepper. We're gonna do a teaspoon of each. And now we're gonna mix everything together. And the goal here is that what we're making right now is essentially pizza dough. It's not gonna be exactly like a pizza dough if you ever made a traditional pizza, but what we're looking for is that everything binds together as well as we can get it to. So just give it a nice mix. We wanna to try to incorporate everything together. You might have to break up the cauliflower. It might still be kind of clumped together. Just use your spatula, use your spoon, and just kind of mash it down and push it all together. So what you're gonna end up with Again, it's not exactly dough because we're not using any kind of wheat or flour here. It's gonna be a little bit softer and a little stickier than that. So, Brayden, get a shot of this. This is exactly the texture that we are looking for. So notice how it is a little more wet and that's totally fine. All right, guys, so now we have gotten to the fun part. We are going to take our dough, let's empty it onto, actually, wait, I forgot to tell you. You need a baking sheet, take some parchment paper, put it right on top. You could use one of those baking mats, like a Silpat, those like French, uh, French fancy ones. Uh, but if you don't have one of those and you have parchment paper, just use that. So I'm going to take our cauliflower pizza dough, if you will, dump it right into the middle here. And we are going to just start to form it and push it down. Now, as you're touching it, you might think, cooking with koi, why is this so wet feeling? And I promise you, that is totally normal. So don't freak out. It's gonna still feel a little bit wet and that's all right. One really important note that you guys need to know, and I don't even know if I mentioned it before in this video, cauliflower pizza crust, when you make it at home, you're never really going to get it perfectly crispy like a traditional pizza crust. It's just not gonna happen. And you might be like, oh no, I tried the one that it was like totally crispy. That might've been a store-bought one. And store-bought ones have preservatives and they have all these different things from the manufacturing process to make them crispy. So that's a different story. But doing it at home, I personally have never seen a very crispy cauliflower crust. It doesn't mean it's not good. It just means that it's a slightly different texture and that's okay. So continue to use your hand and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna form a nice round pizza shape or you could do a heart if you'd like. It's very cute. I actually did a heart pizza once uh, for Valentine's Day and it's pretty nice. Keep pushing it down, pushing it down, pushing it down. As you push down, it's gonna to start to spread out. The thickness that I've found for this pizza crust that I think works really well is anywhere between a third of an inch and a half of an inch. 
can kind of see how thick it is right there. So just kind of do it just like this, guys. All right, so once you have formed your pizza dough, grab your olive oil spray and just give it a nice little spritz. Little spritz like you would, like a little spray paint can. And what we're hoping for here is that the olive oil will help it crisp up a little bit. Now I'm gonna pop this pizza crust into the oven and cook it for 20 minutes. All right, so the 20 minutes is up. Let's see how we did. Oh, yes! Look at this. Beautiful cauliflower pizza crust. I think you guys were doubting me. I think when you were putting your hands on it and it felt wet, you were like, cooking with Koi, I don't know. But take a look at how beautiful this is looking. This is exactly what we want. And now we get to do all the fun parts about making a pizza. So let's take some pizza sauce and we're gonna take our favorite mozzarella cheese. We are taking this pizza, we're gonna pop it back into the oven for anywhere between eight and 10 minutes. All right, I've got two last things to finish off this beautiful pizza. I am going to garnish with a little bit of chopped basil and last but not least, red pepper flakes and just sprinkle them on right on top. This looks so good, I cannot wait to give it a try. But before I do, if you love this recipe and you wanna see more just like it, check out my Healthy Recipes playlist. Okay, let's get into it. All right, see how it tastes. Oh, it's gonna be a little hot. I love this pizza. This cauliflower pizza crust is so delicious and it has such great texture, fantastic flavor. It's grain free, it's super easy to do. Guys, I hope you love this one. I hope you give it a try. See you in the next video.